I want to say praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we certainly shall rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, today marks a, another day that the Lord has given us. I always often say and think in my mind that uh, any time the day that the Lord has given you is another opportunity to get things right, another opportunity to do your best. The scripture says it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions, they fail not. Uh, the scripture says they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And we certainly do thank and praise the Lord for his faithfulness unto us because the Lord is truly good and his mercy endureth forever. I want to welcome you to another broadcast of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church where I'm the lead pastor Suffolk and Bishop-elect Pastor Frankie L. Quinn, and I certainly do thank and praise the Lord uh, for each and every one of you that are signing on here on today, and I thank God for our leadership here at this particular assembly, and we give praise and honor to my lovely wife, Tracy Quinn. We certainly do thank God uh, for each and every member that's a member of Christian Ministries and those whom we touch in the virtual world and uh, come tune in uh, with us on online and follow our Bible studies. We certainly do praise God for that and for you. As we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, we want to remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. We also uh, want to remember any bereaved families. Um, I'm thinking of Sister uh, Mary McGowan, that the Lord uh, minister, uh, Mary McGowan, that the Lord will uh, comfort her family, the McGowan family, give them great peace, and, and the Gore family. Uh, and we also asking you that you continue to pray, pray for those that uh, need restoration, help, and deliverance. We certainly do have a, a great Bible class on for today, so we certainly do want to solicit your prayers, even in this that the Lord will send forth his anointing, open up our understanding so that we may glean something from the word of God. Uh, let every heart pray, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we certainly do thank you and praise you, Lord, for another opportunity to come before these thy great people. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to stand here in, this, in their presence in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul that is under the sound of my voice. Remember each and every prayer request. Remember the bereaved families. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you remember uh, those that are sick and afflicted and are going through in their bodies and in their minds. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We certainly do, like I said earlier, have a good Bible study on today. And I want you to turn with me to the book of St. Matthew, book of St. Matthew, uh, the seventh chapter, and I'll be dealing primarily with the 21st and the 29th verses of that particular chapter. And uh, today's Bible study or today's subject is do not be deceived, do not be deceived. And um, we must be on guard. The Bible teaches us Jesus had taught in this particular chapter, Matthew chapter seven. Uh, he had taught uh, throughout his ministry, I should put it like that, uh, against uh, false prophets and against false teachers. And he's also taught against uh, false discipleship, that people should not be deceived uh, in calling themselves a disciple of Christ, which means a learned pupil or a student of Christ um, in, a, in a way in which uh, their lifestyle does not reflect that. Uh, the Bible says every tree, uh, you know a tree by the fruit that it bears. And um, the, you, we have to examine every tree. Uh, we have the right to examine every tree uh, to see whether it's bearing the right fruit. And that right fruit is simply uh, meaning a productivity of one's life. 
what type of food are you bearing means simply what type of uh, uh, productivity is coming from your life. What are you doing? How are you living? And we all know that a, a righteous person is going to bear righteous fruit. They're going to do things that are righteous and holy before God. And those that are not living a holy life, they're going to bring forth things that are sim sinful or evil. So uh, you know a tree by the fruit that it bears. Uh, I like uh, one of my favorite psalms is Psalms number one. And it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, his happiness, his joy is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate, the scripture says, day and night. And he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. His leaf also shall not wither, and, and whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. And that's the lifestyle of a child of God. Whatever they do, it shall prosper because their footsteps are ordered by the Lord. They're rooted and grounded in the word of God. And then that Psalms goes on to say, and the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. And then the last part of that verse, it says, the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly, it shall perish. So it is a comparison between right and wrong. And Jesus, he ends this particular pa parable, I mean, I'm sorry, not parable, but ends this particular chapter in Matthew number seven, his, uh, uh, his Sermon on the Mount, with a comparison between holy and unholy. And he gives us literally a charge or a command uh, to follow after that which is right, follow after that which is godly and holy. So um, when we are looking here then, as I said earlier, uh, we must be on guard, not only against false teachers and false prophets, but be on guard against false discipleship. And when I say be on guard against false discipleship, I'm not telling you or asking you to, to uh, judge other people, but I'm asking you, and I should also ask myself, uh, the scripture says, let a man examine himself to see whether or not he's in the faith. So be on guard with yourself against false discipleship. Uh, monitor what you do. Examine what you do so that you can be able to uh, make it in, as they say, so that you can be ready when Jesus comes. Uh, if we were to think about uh, anything that is going on in this day and time, we need to be ready, ready when Jesus comes. I was in the, uh, the Walmart on today and uh, right before work I was getting uh, some some odds and ends uh, to take with work to take to work with me and I went to go uh, pay my bill I went to go cash out so to speak and when I got there um, uh, I was in the self uh, line to, to take yourself out of the uh, market and everywhere I went every every register I went to, it was uh, no cash, card only. And that was a reality check for me. That, that really hit me in my mind, saying that, man, we're truly living in the last days. I asked the, the attendant, I said that, uh, is this the sign of the times? Is this the uh, one world government about to come into play? And uh, she kind of got with me. She was quoting some scriptures too <laughs> because it's the time that we're living in. People should not be deceived and we should not be deceived. And the Bible study on tonight is dealing with that. Don't deceive yourself with false discipleship. You call, we can call ourselves a disciple or a follower of Christ, 
but our lifestyle, I can say it with my words, but my lifestyle has to prove whether or not I'm producing the fruit that Jesus has uh, required me to bear. And that's what our Bible study is on tonight. Our subject of our study is do, do not be deceived. And we're coming out of the book of St. Mark, chapter number seven, and I'll be um, focusing in on the 21st through the 29th verses. And um, when we look at this particular chapter, um, we know that it's Jesus is ending up on with his Sermon on the Mount, and uh, he's, he's now giving what I call a last admonishment, a last admonishment uh, from the Lord. And notice verse uh, 21, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. He says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So Jesus is saying, basically, people, um, they can call me Lord. Lord means uh, uh, ruler or master, a, a person that possesses supreme power and authority. And Jesus, he earned the right to be Lord by the life that he lived, giving up his life, being our savior, dying on the cross for you and I. So he earned that right to be called Lord. And the scripture uh, says that no man can call him Lord except by the Holy Ghost. In other words, if you're going to call him Lord, you have to be born again of the water and of the spirit. And also, you have to live a certain lifestyle in order to call him your Lord, because if you say that he's your Lord, that means you follow his commands. You live by his word. The scripture says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And Jesus is that manifestation of the word of God. And we ought to uh, follow after that word. And the scripture says that as many as received Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So Jesus is saying, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, that's calling me Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So Jesus is making a very a strong distinction here. People can uh, say what they want to say and call him Lord, uh, but I want to venture a new term that, that, that entered into my mind on yesterday, that, that they, they are disciples of Christ in name only, uh, not, not true followers of him if they're not doing the will of the Father. That's what distinguishes a true disciple. A true disciple follows after the Word of God. Uh, the true disciple uh, uh, reads and understands and implements the Word of God in their life. There's a lot of people that, that I'm sure you've ran into uh, that say that they are Christians. That, that say that they're saved. And then if you spend time with them, uh, they're, they're, they're in checking their life, not saying that you're judging them whether they're saved or not, because that's not our, that is not our place. But we have the right, because people are living epistles, we have a right to judge whether or not we want to follow after another person's behavior. Paul often said in the scripture, I was amazed, Paul often said in the scriptures, follow me as I follow Christ. He always gave himself as an example to those that read his epistles as who to follow. And even Jesus, Jesus, when he was getting ready to die and, and give his life as a ransom for you and I, 
to be the savior of the world. He, he washed his disciples' feet and he told them, he said, you know why I'm washing your feet? And he said, I'm washing your feet to lead you in example so that you can follow after me. So uh, our lives that we live, it, the scripture says we are to be living epistles, to be read of all men. And uh, people ought to be able to read our lives to tell whether or not we're walking in that faith. So uh, I said that to say that we have come in contact with Christians, people that say that they are Christians, and then when you are uh, engaged with them in conversation, uh, they're, they're, they, they, they cuss, they, they lie, they, they, they fornicate, they, they steal, they, they encourage you to steal, they encourage you to lie, and things such as that. And, and though they say that they are Christians and they're attending church service on a regular basis, you know, and, 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 and things such as that, uh, but, but they, they are only a Christian in name only because they are not following after what is written. The scriptures were given unto us. They were given unto us for reproof, for instruction, for correction, that we may be sound in the doctrine, that we might be uh, uh, prepared unto every good work. So um, there, you don't want to be, and I don't want to be, a Christian in name only. Christian meaning Christ-like in name only. And that's what Jesus is describing here uh, in, in this particular chapter and at the end of these verses. He's describing people that are, are claiming to be uh, his servants, claiming to be his followers in name only. They're not really living the lifestyle uh, that they need to live uh, to be true disciples. And, and that's what I mean when I say uh, we don't want to be deceived. Don't deceive yourself. If the blind lead the blind, they're all falling in the ditch. Don't deceive yourself. We're in the last days. Uh, uh, I don't know when Jesus is coming, but Jesus is coming soon. And, and, and if you're spiritual at all, you can sense that uh, things are changing. You can sense that the times uh, are changing, that something is about to happen. And we don't want to be sleep. We don't want to uh, uh, be blind. We don't want to have this, uh, the rapture catch us off guard. So we need to be ready. So that's what this Bible study is about today, to, to give you an admonishment to get ready. And if you're ready, you need to stay ready uh, because you don't know the time or the hour when the Son of God is going to come to rapture his church. And, and not only that, uh, you may even go by way of undertaker. So you don't know how much time you have here on this earth, but you want to be ready. And you can be ready if you follow after the doctrine and the teaching of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we see here, he says, uh, verse 21, I'm going to move on, I promise you. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, now this is Jesus, uh, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Notice, who's going to enter in? It's not about what you say, it's about what you do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's not about what you say, it's about what you do. Not a, uh, a, a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. Amen? Notice, but he that doeth, and it's an E-T-H on that in the King James Version, which means a continuation, he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So those are the ones that are going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Those that do the will of the Father which is in heaven. Now notice, notice, notice verse 22. And he says, many shall say in that day. What day? The day of judgment. The day of judgment. The day of judgment. There's going to be a day of judgment where not only the saint but also the sinner 
are going to be judged for everything that they've done in their body. The, the, the wise person, the saint of God, they sent all of their sins ahead and get it covered under the blood of Jesus so that if you allow me to say it this way, that at the time of judgment, they're just getting judged for righteousness, not for sinfulness, because their sins have been covered under the blood of Jesus. But those that are wicked, those that are sinful, those that refuse Christ are going to stand one day before the great white throne of judgment and be judged. And at that particular time, it's not going to uh, give you a person an opportunity to plead their case. It's going to be uh, you're guilty and this is your punishment. So we see here that Jesus is saying, verse 22, uh, many shall say to me at that day, the day of judgment, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name have done many wonderful works? Uh, they're going to try to try to plead that, that, that Lord, uh, it's the old adage that, that people say, um, well, I lived a good life. I've done good things all of my life and my, my good shall outweigh my bad. That's not the way to enter into heaven. You, the way to enter into heaven, not of works, least any man should boast, but people enter into heaven through faith in Jesus Christ and living by the faith that is of the Son of God. You don't enter into heaven uh, by, by your works. You can't produce God a list of your great works, that the things that you've done. And Lord, I, I paid, I gave my tithes. Lord, uh, I, I cleaned the church. Lord, I, I, I helped my people across the street. But you didn't live holy. You didn't accept Jesus. You didn't follow after uh, the word of God. And that's what is going to be the judge. Have you done the will of God? Have you lived a holy and righteous life? That's going to be the told tale of whether or not you're going to make it into heaven. Did you get baptized in the name of Jesus? Did you repent of your sins? Did you get filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost? And did you follow after the commandments of the Lord? Did you live holy? Did you live righteous? Did you keep his commandments? Did you finish and run your race and finish your course? Did you keep your assignment? Did you do what God has required of you? That's what's going to be the knew you. Oh, what tragic words to hear from the Lord. My God, I never knew you. Depart from me. My God, my God. I feel like, you remember in the book of Genesis, wherein uh, Cain got his judgment and he was kicked out of the Garden of Eden and uh, uh, kicked out from the presence of God and Cain said these words that have always stuck with me down these through these 30 years. Lord, my, my punishment is too great to bear. My God, if you ever heard these words from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. Those words, my God, would be too great, hallelujah, for any of us to bear. My God, you, if he ever said those words to you, you would spend eternity in the lake of fire uh, having that echo and rain in your mind throughout eternity. My God, uh, it's not worth that. My Lord, sin is not worth that. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. My God, I don't want to put myself in that position wherein the Lord uh, has to say those words unto me. You don't want to put yourself in that position where the Lord has to say those words unto you. The Jesus, he didn't come the first time to judge us. He came the first time to save us. But in the end, hallelujah, by his own very words, 
uh, judgment is going to be passed upon those that don't follow after the word of God. Those that don't build their hopes on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. My God. Hallelujah. My God. My God. I, I feel a rebuke coming on in my spirit. We ought to come out of darkness and walk in the marvelous light. You don't want to be playing around as, as those five foolish virgins that went to the wedding, but they were ill prepared to endure to the end. That parable about the ten wise, I mean the five wise and the five foolish virgins, it's about endurance. It's about lasting until the end. And the five foolish, they didn't have enough lamp or enough oil in their lamp to endure because the bridegroom delayed his coming. And when, when, the, when he showed up, they, they, the foolish ones asked the five wise ones to give us some of your oil. And they said, not so. Amen. At least there not be enough for us. Amen. And their lamp went out. And the Bible tells us that the door was shut. My God. That's, you don't want you don't want to miss out on this. My Lord, you don't want to miss out on the kingdom of heaven. All that Jesus has prepared for those that love him. Hallelujah. The inheritance that we're going to receive to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. For eternity. You don't want to miss this. Hallelujah. My God, you don't want to miss this. Don't be foolish. Hallelujah. What you do with your time, what you do with your life, it matters. It matters. So notice then, hallelujah. Uh, uh, verse 23, he says, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me. Notice what he says, ye worker, you, ye that work iniquity, ye that work iniquity. Ye that work iniquity. Now notice how he's saying it. Notice how he's saying it, that, that they work iniquity. Meaning that they didn't depart from iniquity. That they were in a continuous flow of doing wicked and evil. Uh, when a, a righteous person comes to the Lord. Uh, I'm sorry. When a, in a sinful person comes to the Lord, they depart from sin. They cease from works of ungodliness and unrighteousness. They don't, they know, they reckon themselves to be dead unto sin. And they, uh, they repent, which means to turn their hearts and their minds away from sin to walk in a new way of life, a new way of living. So those old things have passed away. The Bible says, behold, all things have become new. So they don't live a, 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 an ungod, in ungodliness. They don't live in unrighteousness. And that's what Jesus was saying. Ye that work iniquity, they stop uh, uh, doing that which was lawless in the sight of God. They didn't stop living a ungodly life. People that come to Christ, they have to stop living an ungodly life. They have to, uh, that's the reason for baptism. When an individual gets baptized in the name of Jesus, they put to death that old lifestyle. They put to death those old evil ways. And when they, it's symbolic. And when they come up out of that water, they are to walk in the newness of life. It's a spiritual resurrection of what Christ has, has done for you when you accept him by faith. Hallelujah, my God, my God. So, so that's what God expects from us. That's what Christ expects from us. And that's what we ought to expect from ourselves. And that's the reason why we get saved. That's the reason why we get delivered. So that in the end, uh, he doesn't say to us, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. He says, enter ye into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's, 
That's the words we want to hear. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Enter ye into the joy of the Lord. Amen. So let us move forward. My God, let us move forward in our Bible study. So in the end, Jesus is going to say to those that are deceiving themselves, those that um, are, they know the word, but not following after the word, they're deceiving themselves. The scripture says, let a man examine himself to see whether or not he or she is in the faith. And how do you examine yourself? Through the word of God. The word is a light unto your path and a lamp unto your feet. Hallelujah. You are clean through the word which Jesus has spoken unto you. My God. The word is, 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 the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, when he says study to show yourself approved unto God, I don't study God's word to show myself approved uh, unto men so I can preach a good sermon. Hallelujah. That's not why I'm studying. I'm studying so that God can approve of my life. And, and my life is my message. Uh, uh, when you study God's word and, and God puts you up to teach or preach, all you got to do is, is fall back on what God has given to you through the power of the Holy Ghost. And, and that's, he, he gives you that rhema word that you have hid in your heart. Hallelujah. And, and that's what God wants to see from his people. That's what God desires from his people. And that's why I study the word. That's why you should study the word so that God can use you at any time. That God, God can, you can be available so that you can, you, you can speak God's word. And when you speak God's word, it brings forth life. Hallelujah, my God, my God. Hallelujah, my God. I feel, I feel the Bible study changing up in here. I feel some anointing. Hallelujah. Moving in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, the Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. So we see here. Hallelujah, we see here then. Thank you, Lord. Notice what he said. He said in verse 24, he says, therefore, notice that word, therefore, it's a transition. Therefore, amen, B, if you're going to be my disciple, uh, uh, and you're going to call me Lord, uh, you have to uh, live and do the will of God. Because in the end, if you don't do the will of God, I'm going to say, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. That's, that's the balance of things. So now he's transitioning so that he can help us. You know, I, I thank God. I thank my Lord and Savior that he just don't leave us out there. He gives us what we need to do in order to correct our lifestyles. He gives us and tells us what we need to do in order to straighten out. Hallelujah. What, 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 what is crooked. Uh, in order to build up that which is lacking. Uh, hallelujah. To, to, to cause us to walk in his way. So he says in this transitional uh, 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 word, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, <laughs> he said, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house uh, upon a rock. Now I'm going to read the rest of this. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell not. Why? For it was founded upon a rock. Now notice verse 20, 26. It says, And what everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be like a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, 
and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Now, I want to say this. The reason why I read those verses together is because I want to tackle them together. In order to tackle them together, I want to uh, uh, give you some, help you with some understanding about what Jesus is saying. About what Jesus is saying. A person in earlier in the Bible class, I said, uh, you have people who are Christians in name only. And people that are Christians in name only, they build their house upon the sand. And what, what Jesus is describing here is that uh, back where in Jesus' time, in, in Jesus' day, uh, where Jesus lived, uh, the sand was hard. It was, it was hard. It, it, it literally, you could actually build a house upon it. And uh, what Jesus is saying is, it says, if you just build your house upon the sand, then when the storms come and the rains come, because it was not built upon a rock or the bedrock, it's going to fall. It's going to, it's going to uh, 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 not, it's going to cease to exist because the storms and the rain that beat upon it. So what Jesus is saying is that those that are my disciples, those that are true disciples, are not just surface level disciples. They dig deep. Amen. They go down to the bedrock. They, they, they get deep into my word. They, they follow after my word. They practice my word. They live a lifestyle that shows that they are in relationship with me. And they, they, they literally live a, a holy life to, 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 to get into the word of God, not only just to be a hearer of the word, but they get into it and they become the word of God. They live the word of God. They breathe the word of God. The Bible says they set their affections on things above, not on things of this earth, not as, but they set their affections on things above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. They, they think like Jesus. The scripture says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. When he found himself in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself. Those are deep saints. Hallelujah. Those are the ones that dig deep in the word of God. Hallelujah. That through trials, through tribulation, through persecution, they remain faithful. Hey, hallelujah. The Bible says, don't cast away your confidence, which have great recompense or reward, for you have need of patience, that after you have done what God requires, after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. And those that, 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 that are looking for the promise, he says, they don't draw back. Hallelujah. Those are the ones that have dug deep and, and, and allowed their anchor to hit that solid rock. Hey, and that rock is Jesus. So when the storms come and when the rains come, they're not moved. Hallelujah. Why? Because they heard the word and they built the foundation. They, they settled themselves in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So that nothing shall be able to separate them from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That's what Jesus is talking about. You don't want to let nothing separate you. Hallelujah. From Christ Jesus. You don't want to let nothing separate you from his love. So when we look at these scriptures here, we see Jesus then says, a wise person. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
A wise person is one who receives wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and they literally receive revelation. Wisdom is simply revelation. Hallelujah. Revelation in what? Revelation in the word of God. Revelation in the will of God. And when you receive revelation into the, in the word or the will of God, you do it. Uh, what are you saying, Brother Pastor? I, I, I receive revelation from God that it's wrong for me to smoke. So wisdom, I, I apply it, and then it becomes wisdom. Uh, I, I receive revelation that it's, it's wrong for me to, to, to commit adultery. And so when, when the temptation comes, I apply the revelation and it becomes wisdom. Amen? Hallelujah. So that's what wisdom is. The application of God's uh, 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 knowledge and understanding in his word. When you know and understand God's word and you receive the revelation and apply it, it becomes wisdom. Hallelujah. And that's what God wants us to do. Jesus says, I, I'm teaching you. Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is the very foundation of, of the word of God. Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is truly the explanation of God's Ten Commandments. Matthew 5, 6, and 7, if you study that, it is the whole book of the Torah and condensed in the sayings of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's the wisdom of God. That's, that's who we're dealing with when we're dealing with Jesus. Jesus covered, hallelujah, the, the word of God, hallelujah, and condensed it in a way in which if we receive the revelation and through the power of the Holy Ghost, we apply it, we will be wise. Hallelujah. We would be wise. Take a couple shot. Hallelujah. I want to be wise. Hallelujah. The Bible, what does it say in, in the Beatitudes? Blessed are, 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 are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the peacemaker, my God, for they, they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Hallelujah. For they, uh, 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 the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And Jesus said, and notice the wisdom, blessed are they when men shall revile you and say all manner of against you evil for my name's sake. Hallelujah. He tells us to do what? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. And then Jesus, he teaches us how, how, how to pray in, in, that, in, in the Sermon of the Mount. He teaches us how to give he teaches us how to love. Hallelujah. He goes on and on to give us wisdom so that if we apply these sayings of his, it literally transforms you into a deep person. <laughs> that you can literally build your foundation upon that rock. And that rock is Jesus. Because rest assured, trials and tribulation, persecution, Ah, it's going to come. Hallelujah. You, you can't stop hardness. You can't stop the rain from coming. You can't stop the sadness from coming. Hallelujah. My God. You can't stop people from doing you evil. My God. Ah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But how you respond is, is you have to respond according to the revelation of Jesus Christ, which is the wisdom of God. Hallelujah, my God. People treat you bad. You get an opportunity to get them back. The word of God says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Amen. So instead of you trying to get revenge, you be merciful. Hallelujah. And that's wisdom. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's wisdom. So notice what Jesus is saying. Hallelujah, my God. We're almost done here with our Bible study. But notice what Jesus is saying. Let me go back up. Hallelujah. He said, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, 
whosoever hear, that, that word hear there means with an intent to obey. You hear with your soul, the ear to your soul, with the intent to obey. As long as you have an intent to obey the word of God, God will give you revelation. That's why the scripture says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to every man uh, liberally and abradeth not, meaning God does not get upset with you. There's no silly questions with God. Amen? Hallelujah. Why? Because God wants you to be able to stand. God wants you to be able to be strong. Hallelujah. So notice what he says. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and here's the key, do with them. <laughs> you got to do them. Um, you got to, you got to, you know that him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Uh, you, when you know uh, to do good and do right, you have to do it. Uh, you got to swear to your own hurt. Uh, hallelujah. You got to uh, surrender yourself, humble yourself uh, to do the will of God. Hallelujah, my God. I was, I was yesterday, I was struggling with some stuff, even my own self. And, and you know, I'm like, Lord, I, I, I know what your word says. <laughs> and, and Lord, I need you to help me. <laughs> Amen. You know, it's good. It's good to acknowledge God because we're human. And our flesh don't want to do uh, that which is right in the sight of God. Amen. And we need help. Uh, Jesus uh, when he said, Father, you know if there's any other way uh, to remove this cup, he said, let this cup pass, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be. He was crying out for help. Amen. He was letting the Father know, I need help. Uh, hallelujah. And the Father gave him help by not answering him. <laughs> Jesus. Let him know that, hey, yeah, uh, uh, you know what to do. I put it in you, and you got to carry it out. So, so as I was seeking after God and asking God for help on yesterday, thank you, Lord, I humbled myself. And I did what God had asked me to do. Hallelujah. And when I got through doing it, I received joy. I received peace. Because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. I rejoice. Hey, glory. In the name of Jesus. Because that's victory. Amen. Uh, and when we serve in the Lord, it's not that I got to climb some big mountain. I, uh, I, I got to go dip myself in the river of Jordan seven times. I got I to gotta walk the, the furthest mile. No, victory is doing the very smallest thing that is right before you that you do right now. That's victory in the name of Jesus. And when you do the little things, it can add up to the big things. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. I got to move on. Hallelujah. So we see here. Notice, notice. He that doeth them. The key is doing them. I will liken him to a wise man. A person that is wise, they receive revelation from the Lord. And you receive revelation from the Lord by having a knowledge and an understanding of his word. Through your knowledge and understanding comes revelation, which equals wisdom. And, and it's a cycle. The more you know and understand and the more you apply, the more wisdom you will gain. It's a cycle. God gives you a little and then if you if you operate in that little uh, and, and do that little, you will gain more. But if, on the contrary, if God gives you a little and you don't do that little, you won't receive any more. Because God is not in the, in the business. I mean, I'm just going to get a little deep here. God is not in the business of giving everybody his secrets amen, that are not um, uh, worthy of him. And what do I mean by that? I mean that, that if you had uh, some people that called you friend, you wouldn't tell them 
uh, all your deep secrets, if they're proving themselves to be phonies, if they're proving themselves to be fake, uh, but from your true friends, you wouldn't withhold anything from them. Hallelujah. Same way with God. God ain't trying to uh, equip the evil with his wisdom and knowledge and understanding so that they can work against the saints. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. But God is trying to build up his people and to edify his people. My God. So we see here. My Lord, let me finish up here. My God in heaven. He says, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. Notice, and it fell not. Why? Because they dug deep. Amen. They were not Christians in name only. Amen. They were, they were saints of God. Why? Because they built their house upon the rock. They dug deep. They didn't stay upon the sand. They dug deep and got into a relationship and a commitment with Christ and built their house. Notice them. Uh, and, uh, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be like unto a foolish man. It's foolish to hear the word of God and not obey. It's foolish. I, I'm deceiving myself. That's the crux of this Bible class. Don't be deceived. Don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer. Practice what the Lord has, has put in your heart. God, he will not lead you astray. God sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, which means to be eternally separated. Hallelujah. Jesus is the wisdom of God. He's the righteousness of God. He's the sanctification of God to help us. To build us up so that in that day, he can say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter ye into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and if you find yourself that, that say, Lord, I have not done what you have required me to do. I have lived a lifestyle that was ungodly. You can repent uh, and turn to Christ. The Bible tells us that, that the, uh, if we confess our sins, he's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful to forgive us our sins. And the blood, hallelujah. Somebody say the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. He will wash us and cleanse us from all of our sin. Uh, one of the, I'm going to tell you this and then I'm going to turn it, cut, cut it off. That one of the greatest revelations that I've received, uh, uh, I'll say, in this year. Was, was the understanding of coming boldly to the throne of grace. I used to think that that scripture just meant for saints, amen, to come boldly to the throne of grace. But uh, uh, that scripture really means that let any man, let any woman, saved or sinner, let them come boldly with confidence to the throne of grace to the throne of Jesus Christ so that you might obtain mercy and find grace to help you in the time of need. In other words, Jesus, he broke down that middle wall of partition, oh, hallelujah, yeah. which represented his flesh, hallelujah. And he, he broke it down so that Jew and Gentile can now enter in. And if you're gonna enter in, you got to come by way of Jesus Christ. And where is Jesus seated? He's seated on the right hand of the Father on the throne. Hallelujah. So you can come boldly, my God, with confidence. Thank you, Lord, with your filthy, nasty self. You can come confidently. Hallelujah. Knowing that there is a Savior. That there is a deliverer. That if I confess my sins, he's faithful to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. 
And then if you get baptized in the name of Jesus and get filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, you will have power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank God uh, for this Bible study on tonight. And, and we want to encourage you. Thank you, Lord. Don't be deceptive. Don't live a deceiving life. Don't be a pretender uh, or an actor. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. My God, I don't want to be an actor. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, preachers be preaching and trying to, uh, I'm getting a little on the, my preachers now. Preachers be preaching and, and they be trying to get the crowd involved and things like that. They acting. They pretending. Just preach the word. Uh, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and with all long suffering. Let the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost excite the people. You don't excite the people. Let the Holy Ghost excite them. Oh, Hallelujah. Let that word be quick. Let it be powerful. Hallelujah. Sharpen it in a two-edged sword. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for the Bible study on today. Thank you, Lord. And if you want to get baptized in the name of Jesus, just put your, your name there in the comments. I'll hit you back. Thank you, Lord. We'll set up a time where you can get baptized in the name of Jesus. And if you repent, God will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. It's time now to be saved. It's time now to be delivered. It's time now to be set free. Hallelujah. And to live according to the word of God. So we want to thank God for you today. Amen. And we want you to tune in with us on Sunday, this Sunday at 10 o'clock. And also uh, the church doors are open. You can come Sunday at 10 o'clock. There's new restrictions Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, on the numbers of attendance. Uh, check with the CDC and find out what their, those restrictions are. But we trust God. We believe in God. Thank you, Lord. And we're sanitizing the church before and after service. We got a sanitation team that, that uh, we've hired. Uh, and they come in and sanitize the church professionally uh, every two weeks. Hallelujah. We've got social distancing. All people that have come to Christian ministries are, are required to wear your mask, wash your hands, and sanitize and keep your distance. Hallelujah. But, you know, if you draw down to the Lord, uh, he'll draw down to you. Uh, he won't stay away from you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we thank God for the fellowship. We thank God for the love. Amen. And we thank God for each and every one of you. And we want to say this in our departing that uh, you're able to give through timely, electronically. Uh, you're able to give, uh, um, bring your tithes and offering to the drop box. And uh, here at the church, it's secure. And you're able to mail your tithes and your offering in to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508. So I want you to be encouraged. Keep your hearts and mind on the Lord. Hallelujah. For he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you're able to ask according to that power that worketh in you. In Jesus' name, amen.